Sometimes you got to take the mic. Because see, some of us, we're so close. But yet, we don't like God, I'm tired. I'm tired. I, I hear you, God, and I'm close, but I'm tired. I done been through this. I done been through that. But God, I'm tired. I hear your word saying that I'm close. Well, I can even see the finish line, but God, my legs are tired. They can't carry me another step. Oh, God. It's got to be in my message. Oh, Lord, Lord. So when you tired and you talking to the Lord in prayer, what are you saying to him? So many times what we'll do is we'll try to be strong about everything. And we'll try to say, I'm strong enough to do I done been through this. I done been through this. I heard it said this morning that when you're talking to God, it's like a counseling session. If you've ever been to counseling before, the counselor don't want to hear about what you're strong in. They want to hear about your weaknesses. They want to hear about what areas are you weak in. So when you're praying to God, are you telling him about what you're strong in or have you talked to him about your weaknesses? Have you talked to him and said, God, I don't need it all. I don't try everything I can do. I can't do it no more. I need you to take over. God, because I, I, I'm tired of it. I'm ready to finish. I'm ready to be done. Yes, I know it's close, but I just don't have no more time for it. I can't deal with it anymore. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I sit and I talk to God and I'm just like, God, I know what you're saying. God, I know what you can do, but God, I'm tired. God, I'm tired. I can't take it anymore, God. God, and then you know what God says? That's what I was waiting on. That's what I was waiting on. I was waiting on you to get tired. I was waiting on to hear about your weaknesses. Because in your weaknesses, there is my strength. See, some of us, we want God to do stuff, but we're too busy trying to be strong. We're too busy trying to do everything for him. And God is saying, I'm waiting for you to get weak. Go ahead and, hey, listen. Have you ever seen two kids playing and they're like, why don't you stop them? And you're like, no, I'm waiting on them to tire themselves out. Because when they tire themselves out, then I can start doing what I want to do. God is saying, I'm waiting on you to tire yourself out in this situation that you're in. I'm waiting on you to tire yourself out. Yes, yes, your destiny is right there. Right there. It's right there, right where you can reach it. But you won't reach it until you let me take control. And you're not going to let me take control as long as you got the strength in your body. God, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. He said, I'm waiting on you to get good and tired so I can take over. My God, I need to let you take this thing. Let's try to talk back to me. Let's try to talk back to me. Uh, so, listen. God was, I was praying this week, and the Lord said, tell them to boast in their weakness and trust my strength. Boast in your weakness. And I said, okay, God, well, well can, can I just, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this thing a little bit, okay? So he, came, he had me come out of 2 Corinthians 12. Well, Paul had been pr praying and crying out to God because there was a thorn in his flesh. And we don't know where that thorn was, but we know that Paul was tired of it. We knew that he had been praying about this thing, and it seemed like God hadn't answered him yet. He'd been praying and praying and praying, yet God hadn't answered him. Let me tell you something. Just because God hadn't answered you doesn't mean he hasn't heard you. Just because he hasn't moved yet doesn't mean he's not going to move. It doesn't mean I need to cry louder. It doesn't mean I need to go to somebody else and ask them their opinion. It just means that I need to continue praying to him and listening to his instructions. See, Paul was at a point where he, I, I can't do nothing else with this storm. Some of us have said, God, I can't do nothing else with this situation. I've done everything I can do. I've tried everything that I can, I can try, but nothing seems to be working. And he began 
begin to say, God, I'm to the point where I'm just weak now. I've exhausted myself. Some of us have exhausted ourselves physically, emotionally, financially. And we still wonder, God, why haven't you done anything? And it's because you still got enough strength in you that you haven't given it to him yet. Oh, my God. Verses eight, verse 8 of that, of that chapter says, Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Three times I went to God. And I told him how it was affecting me. How it was hindering me. How it was, it was preventing me from doing his will. But he still didn't take it away. Paul was wondering, God, am, am I in the right place? Because this storm is still here. Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Because I've come to you once. I came to you again. And I'm back here again to you, God. Yet I'm still facing the same situation. What Paul didn't realize was sometimes when we go through storms, that storm is not for us. Sometimes when you go through a storm, it's for the people that's looking at you. See, Paul had to realize that he had to endure the storm. Because sometimes people are looking at you and they'll say, okay, you took it well, the initial hit of it. But will you endure the storm with God still? Yeah, you can take the hit of it and say, I trust God. But year one, year two, year three, are you still trusting God? Or have you looked somewhere else? See, and then Paul didn't realize that the timing of removing that, that thorn may not be right. See, we, we, we have several timelines and several time zones. See, of all the time zones, God has his own. Yeah. And in God's time zone, it doesn't go like ours. And sometimes we have to go through a little bit longer because it's not time for that thorn to be removed. Excuse me. Verse 9 says, each time he said it, my grace is all you need. Uh -huh. That hurts. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. That hurts. Yeah, yeah. When God says, my grace is all you need. Yeah. When you're getting cussed out. Yeah. And you're getting told who you are. Yeah. And God says, my grace is all you need. When you down to your last dollar and God says, just trust me, it stings. When you're like, but God, that's all I've been doing this whole time. And that's all you have for me. Just trust you that your grace is enough. God, but don't you see how they treated me? But you said, just trust you. God, I want to see some action here. And all you're doing is speaking. And God says, don't you realize that actions are in my word? When I speak, actions must occur. And then it says, my power works best in weakness. My power works best best in weakness. We've been singing that ever since we were little kids. Singing Jesus loves me. When I am weak, he is strong. If only we knew that we would have to live through that thing. And God is saying, I want you to tell me where are you weak? So I can be your strength right there. Where are you weak? So I can come and I can take over. Where are you weak so I can be all that you need? Where are you weak in your prayers? Are you saying, God, I need you because I can't do this anymore? 
God, I need you because I can't hold, I can't keep myself. Are you saying, God, I need you because they need me? I can't be everything that they need, so I need for you to be everything for me, and I need you to be everything for them. Because I tried to do everything that I could, and I always came up short. I gave them all that I could give them, but yet it still wasn't enough. Can you tell God, God, I'm weak here. I need you to be my strength. I can't do it. What is that doing? That's boasting in your weakness. We are always boasting about how strong we are. What we can do. What we can accomplish. God want to know about those things that you're weak in. That thing that you tried that you didn't tell nobody about and you failed at. That's what God said. Let me in right there. That's where I want to come in. Because, see, I promised you joy. I promised you peace. I, I promised you all of me. I promised you life and life more abundantly. But you can only achieve that if you admit your weaknesses. We come to church and we try to be so strong. And God is saying, but if you're so strong, why do you need me? Boast in your weaknesses. Tell God, this is where I need you in my life. I've tried it time and time again. And I know I can't do it. I know I can't do it. He said, so I gladly boast in my weakness. So that the power of Christ can work through me. It's not until you admit that God, I can't do it, that he's allowed to do it. It's once we realize, God, there is my destiny, there is my finish line. But I can't come close to it if I don't have you. See, God will allow you to go so far. And then you got to realize, God, I didn't realize that I was doing this with you. Because when you get the big head and start thinking that it's all you, God will step back. He'll step back and he'll say, let's see what you can do on your own. Deal. Let's see what you can do with your own power, on your own will. But then when you start saying, but God, I, 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 I know now. I can't do it without you. Then he said, okay, now I can show you my strength. I can show you what I can do. We have to get to the point that we stop thinking that we're superhuman and that we're capable of doing it all. And one thing that God shared with me as I was reading, writing this point, he said, let my people know, do your assignment, the assignment that God has given you. Don't worry about sister so-and-so's assignment over here. Don't worry about brother so-and-so's assignment over there. You do what God has told you to do. If they don't do what they're supposed to do, God knows how to supplement and put somebody else in that place. Well, God, I know that they ain't going to do right. Well, don't let them do right then. Quit enabling people and saying it's in God's name. Quit doing for them what God told them to do. On, and then you worry about how you're going to get done what he told you to do. Ah, because yeah. you done exhausted yourself doing somebody else's assignment. Yeah, you yeah. You're trying to do for them yeah. what well, you know they mama not going to do right. Jesus. You didn't give them a chance. Come on, Come on. God told them to do something. Ah. And because you stepped in, you overrode what God told them to do. You didn't give them the opportunity to do it. You're an, an accomplice to their dis disobedience now. 
they were drunk. They, they had a talk with God Himself. And He spoke to them. And then you and all of your wisdom came in and shut it down. Just because you thought you knew more than what God told you. They not going to do right. You wasn't there in the midnight hour when they cried out to God asking God, how can I do this? God, show me how to do this. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better parent. And you showed up. And did everything that God told them to do. And then turn around and say, well, God, you're going to have to do something with them. <laughs> do you really want God to do something about this thing? And this situation where you keep meddling in? Because you're praying on God to deal with you when you do that. Stop trying to be the superhuman. God wants us to, he says, okay, I want you to go ahead and acknowledge your weakness. Get rid of all of that energy that you got. That you up in everybody else's business. You up in everybody else's business trying to do this, do that, but you ain't done what God told you to do yet. You ain't done what God told you to do yet. God waiting on you to admit your weakness. He waiting on you to get tired because as long as you got energy, you all up in everybody's yes, stuff. Sir. You doing everything except for what he told you to do. He said, I'm waiting on you to get tired. Go ahead and tire yourself out. When you admit your weaknesses, you show your vulnerability to God. You say, God, I trust you. I throw my hands up off this situation. I take my hands off of it. I'm not going to take it back from you this time. I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to let you keep it, God. I've done everything I can with this thing, and I don't know what else to do. So all I know now is to give it to you. All I know is to give it to you. God, it may look like I'm walking away from them, but the truth is if I stay right here, God, I'm going to continue to meddle. I'm going to continue to do stuff I shouldn't do. So it looks like in man's eyes that I'm walking away. But the truth, I'm leaving it in your hand. Because if I stay here, I'm going to continue to do what I think is right. And you told me not to lean to my own understanding. And that's all I've been doing. And it seemed like the more I lean to my own understanding, the more I mess it up, the more worse the thing gets, the more they do what they want to do, the more they choose not to listen to me, the more they turn from you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Ah. Happy Mother's Day. Because I promise you all this is not written here. This is the Spirit of God. He knows what each and every one of us are going through today. You may be hearing the same words, but it's hitting you differently for each individual. Verse 10 says, that's why I take pleasure in my weakness. It doesn't stop there. It also says, in the insults, in the hardships, in the persecutions, in the troubles that I suffer for Christ. Are you suffering for Christ or are you suffering because you just thought that this might make you feel good? Yeah. I would feel better if I did this for them. I would feel better if I knew that this was taken care of. Yeah. Now your bills are due. You were not suffering for Christ. You were suffering for your own sake. For your own peace of mind. And now your peace of mind is going to be in the dark. Because you can't pay your bill. Why are you suffering? Did you get in the middle of somebody else's business? And you decided, I'm going to pay their bill. I'll, I'll take care of them. And then when it's time for your life to get turned off, they're not answering your phone call. They ain't nowhere to be found. 
Are you suffering for Christ's sake or for your own sake? Because they called you, you thought you had to answer the phone and pay that bill. I got news for you, baby. I got money, but it ain't for you. I got what you need, but it ain't for you. Listen, I tell my wife all the time. If God tells me to do it for somebody, I'm going to do it because God will take care of me. But if he ain't spoke to me, that's between you and God. I'm not going to get in God's business. We were talking, she said, baby, but I thought that's what we do. It is what we do when God tells us to do it. But when God ain't said nothing, uh-huh. I'm gonna do like God, and I'm gonna be on. The, she will be talking about it. if you're on the phone and all we got is air. That's all you get from me. <laughs> that's all you get from me. I know you got it. I do. The God, God gave it to me, but He didn't tell me to give it to you. He didn't tell me to listen. So many of you, uh, listen. I'm gonna talk to the mamas real quick. Can I be there? Yeah. So many mamas are trying to take the place of God. And making sure that they children got everything. Yeah, we then we start praying. God, why don't they listen to you? Why don't they seek you? Because you keep calling you. Why would he need a God when he got a mama that's gonna do everything for him? Why does she need to pray to God when all she got to do is text mama real quick? Baby, is your cash app still this? You need me to sell you this? You ain't, they ain't talk to God any longest because all they got to do is get in contact with you. God, why don't they have a relationship with you? Because they got a relationship with you and you're doing everything for them. Hey, we may need to run out of here after the end of service because I know somebody going to be trying to hit me. <laughs> but yet, when they don't have, it's their weakness. Now they're boasting to you so they don't have to boast to God. And yet, you said it earlier, Mom. You was like, I kept wondering, what am I going? To, how's life gonna be like after Mama leave? Mm-hmm. But your mama left you with Jesus. Yes. Lord, Knowing Jesus. Yes. Are you truly allowing your children to know Jesus if you answering all of their prayers? Because that's what it is. We said that prayer is a conversation. So they're praying to you, and you're answering their prayers. They have a conversation with you. And they say, I need. I would like. Mama, don't you know this going to happen if you don't do this? Mama, don't you under, Mama, don't you love me? Mama, what about your grandbabies? Mama, you going to let them be in the dark? Mama, what about them? What about them? Imagine if they would replace Mama with Jesus. Instead of saying, Mama, I need it, they were saying, Jesus, I need you to do this for me. Jesus, I need Jesus, I done tried everything. Take a second real quick. Y'all know I like doing this. Take a second real quick. Think about the last conversation you had with your child when they asked you for something. Now replace that mama with a prayer to Jesus. How would that have sound to you as a mama who wants their child to get to know Jesus a little bit better? How would that sound to you as a mama who's saying, God, I want them to know you on a one-on-one cases. I want them to have a relationship with you just as comfortable as they're asking me for stuff. I want them to be comfortable with asking you for stuff and knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to come through for them. My God. God wants us to boast in our weakness and tell him about it. 
That way he, know, he will be able to strengthen us through his power. That way we can't say, I did this. I did that. Them eyes get us in trouble. Amen. Them eyes make us forget who we are in God. Them eyes make us forget where we have come from. Because we think, oh, God brought me through this, and we done got a little status in our lives. We forget. Even though you have status, you also have weaknesses. And those weaknesses, that's where the enemy coming after. Your weaknesses. So if you boast those weaknesses to God, he said, let me, let me give you a little extra protection around these areas. And let me strengthen you. So that you know that it had to be God that brought me through this thing. It had to be God. So on today, what I want you to do is, I want you to stop looking at weaknesses as a bad thing when you're talking to God. Because when you're talking to God about your weaknesses, he says, hey, give me another opportunity. Oh, there's another avenue I can use. Oh, I can do that. I can, I can, I can. You have too many weaknesses. I'm so glad you have too many weaknesses because I can strengthen you in all of them. I can be there for you in every single one of those areas. So when you boast to God about your weakness, let him know, God, I'm tired. That's my weakness. God, I feel helpless. That's my weakness. God, I don't know what to do next. That's my weakness. And in each one of those areas, God said, Thank you. okay, I'll show you. I'll give you strength. I'll be there for you. We often say the verse, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But as we've talked about today, God will only strengthen you when you tell me that you're weak. So you're going to have to have that conversation with him. And let him know, God, I need you. I can't do this without you. I try and I fail. And in my failure, I come to you. And I give it to you so that you can strengthen me, God. Because if I come to you in my failure... I know next time to come to you from the get-go. So it will be a success. As you acknowledge your weakness, invite him into your situation. See, it's one thing to boast about it and to let him know and to acknowledge it. It's another thing to say, but God, come in and do something about this thing. We can, we can, I, I was talking to my wife earlier this week. I, she not here, so she ain't gonna My daughter, my oldest daughter, had an issue going on, and I said, "Girl, you just need to pray about it. You need to pray about it." That was on Monday, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Monday night. I told Felicia, I said, "I figured out how to do it. I figured God has shown me how to resolve this issue." She said, "Good, you go tell her." I said, "No, because she hadn't come and asked me for help." <laughs> A lot of us are telling God our problems and our situations, but we hadn't asked him for help. He says, I got the answer for you. And you telling him all about it. He said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then we walk away. We don't say, God, come in to this situation. God, come help me. I need you to be my strength. He said, I'm waiting on you. You telling me about it, but you haven't invited me into it. He's a perfect gentleman. He is not going to force himself on you. God, why haven't you moved? Because you haven't asked me to. You just told me your problem. It's like taking your car to a mechanic. You can tell him what's going on. But then until you say, hey, can you fix it for me? He go, the mechanic go acknowledge your problem. He heard you. He listened to you. He even diagnosed it as you were talking to him. But until you ask him to fix it, he gonna leave your car broke. 
So not only do you need to tell God about your weaknesses, invite him into your situation. Amen.